There. Oh, that's when... when we that man. Yeah, that was when Nuncreed uh, pushed us down into the pit. Into the phone booth. That's how we figured that out. Okay. So... Malice. There was a malice lurking <coughs> behind those eyes. Like a trap ready to spring. Luca felt the weight of Nuncrete's hand on his shoulder. Something wasn't right. He didn't know why, but something was telling Luca to get out of there. I just want this to be all over. Of course, I'm sure it... <clears throat> of course, I'm sure it will all work out soon. I should be going. I told Roxy I'd check for Rolo at the treehouse. Of course! Luca? You know your dad and I were good friends back in the day. You can come to me with anything. Anything at all. Ah! Run, 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 run. Festival decorations are a bit humdrum. Now, if I were to throw a festival, it would be a thing to behold. Real red. It's worse than sad. It's boring. What if we did a little something to spice things up? Right, reasoning. You know that festival sign waiting to be unveiled. It would be a shame if someone eagerly formulating a plan. <laughs> what does book lady have to say? Hmm. He looked down and muttered in a gruff voice. Mom always told me my problems would look smaller once I grew up. But my problems always seemed to grow right along with me. Heavens, I sense big trouble ahead. I'll drink to that. Hell yeah. Oop. Identify yourself, please. Nelly mode will. I work here now. I am unable to locate you on our staff roll. Oh, I don't officially start until tomorrow. Mr. Kerr said I could come in early tonight to get a few things done. Hold, please. Also, would you like some rice? Clearance authorized. Go, I could go for some rice. Mm. Some Cajun, maybe. Mm. I shouldn't... I should dig out that recipe to make for dead again. Ooh. Thank you! Our harvest awaits. Whoa! You could get a wrench to the nog and sneaking up on a guy like that. Don't scare a man while he's drunken, Sonny. Excuse me? Uh, pardon? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you be junkin' out in public, mister. If we ever do Snatcher, <laughs> we will never be able to go through that game with a straight face. <laughs> Evening, Jeff. Isn't it kind of late to be junkin? In public? <laughs> I might as well ask the same thing of you. He's 12! <laughs> Find anything good? The heaven since perennial harvest moved in, the, even the junk is trash. You can learn a lot about a person by looking at what they throw away. With this bunch, it's all shredded paper and coffee cups. Well, I'd better get going. I didn't see nothing if you didn't see nothing. No, sir, I didn't see you junking in public again. <laughs> see what? Exactly. Can we sneak into perennial harvest? Nope. Damn. I'm assuming we just gotta go straight to the to the to mission control. <laughs> Rolo. He aired a long holler into the woods. Rolo. Ricola. Rolo, wherever you are, I hope you're okay. I felt his eyes getting heavy, 
and plopped into the beanbag. He conceded to its lumpy embrace. Once again, another flashback. He found himself in a vast black expanse. This time, he knew exactly where to go. He took a single confident step forward. The world flickered and pulsed. He found himself standing in front of the frigid air of a blazing campfire. The source. The source. He down cross-legged and gazed into the cold flame, waiting. Soon enough, the fire began to die out, popping sporadically, until all that was left was a single ember. Lucas stood up and dusted himself off. He plucked the glowing ember from the cold ash, examined it, and slid it into his pocket. A keepsake. The voice of his father spoke behind him. You made me proud, Buckaroo. Luca turned to face him. Dad, what is this place? A warm grin grew across his father's face. A place where everything that has been and everything that could be all wait. It is genuinely between time. Oh my god. Damn. Luca found himself staring at his father's face trying as hard as he could to memorize every single detail. Wait? For what? Another voice spoke out as Lucas Doppelganger stepped forward. That's up to you. Without knowing why, Luca began to weep. Is... is any of this real? Are you real? Luca's father bent down to smudge away a tear. Of course. I'm as real as the part of you that misses me. Luca turned to look at the older version of himself. And you? The doppelganger choked back tears. I'm as real as the part of you that's angry he's gone. Does that Maybe it's sense? all in our head. Through his tears. We'll know in a minute. Mm -hmm. Or will we? Hmm. I think so. His father pulled him in for an embrace. Time to go, buckaroo. Luca was startled from his dream by a banging on the floor. A commanding voice rumbled from below. Just as Luca sprang to lock the entry hatch, the door knocked open. <gasps> Chapter 5. Dangers Big and Small Luca stumbled back. He heard the rope ladder creak under significant weight. Keeping his eyes fixed on the hatch, he inched backward to the balcony. As his hand grasped the door handle, Luca froze. A large figure clumsily wriggled up through the hole. Uh, hi? Stop right there. Or I'll... Sheesh, I know it's dark and all, but I figured you'd recognize me. Who are you? The large figure cocked its head inquisitively. Stop now or I'll clobber you with a Louisville slugger. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Take it easy. Luca, you need to get your ass checked. It's me, Rolo. Nice try, but I know you aren't Rolo. You're like one of his random uncles or something. He has like 8,000 of those. Where is he? <laughs> Uncle, Luca quit messing around. It's me. If it really is you, prove it. Flaming chicken coop, Luca. Luca's jaw dropped. He peered more closely at the man standing in front of him. Something about him was undeniably Rolo, only bigger, older, changed. <coughs> Holy shit, it is you. How? The hell happened? When I was running away, I ran into more people in those yell suits. They grabbed me and dragged me away. What? Where did they take you? Dunno. They threw a bag over my head. It was cold and smelled like a swimming pool. I think it was an underground lab or something. They made my hands all big. Look! Rolo proudly presented his hands to Luca. Pretty sweet, right? I mean, it wouldn't be my first pick for a superpower, but beggars can't be choosers. Rolo, it wasn't just your hands. My feet, too? Dang, Pa just made me new shoes. Wait, Luca, why are you so small? Luca moved to the side and pointed Rolo to his reflection in the balcony window. 
What the? His hands shot up to his face. Holy Toledo! Rolo, what did they do to you? They made me drink some sort of green crud. Ew. Actually, it wasn't too bad. God did like licorice. Oh no! Oh no! I passed out and woke up like this. I sorta of smashed open my cage and escaped. You smashed open a cage? Also convenient they gave you a new pair of clothes. Kinda. Cause I think I did. It's a little bit of a blur. They had you in a cage? Who are these people? I don't know who did this to you, but we're gonna fix it. Fix it? This is awesome! Well, I'm just glad you're safe now-ish. <laughs> Luca, you don't need to worry about me. Sure, I got snatched, but look at it this way. I got snatched. I don't know where snatched people go. We may finally have a lead on what happened to your family. Maybe you're right, but this all seems dangerous. Danger? Huh. <laughs> Rollo shadow boxed a few jabs. I'll take them all on. Hey, fellas, what's up? With a yelp, Rollo dove behind Luca. Ah! Take cover! Did I come at a bad time? Who the heck are you? Oh, right. You haven't met in this timeline. This is Beck. Sorry. Something truly bizarre just happened, and I need help. I didn't know where else to go. So you're just hanging there with your large adult friend? <laughs> uh, uh, no, this, this is, this is my buddy Rolo. This is your missing friend? One and the same. He seems a little... old. I'll have you know this is a recent development. What the heck does that mean? Listen, puberty's a bitch. Oh, I'm sorry, you're the one who just showed up out of nowhere, so we'll be asking the questions here. That's fair. How did you find us? Your silly little treehouse? I think you mean our silly little mission control? I hate to break it to you, but your secret path isn't so secret. And I can hear your racket from a mile away. Your voice carries. I feel called out. <laughs> See, Luca? This is why we need to improve security around here. Not now, Rolo. Beck, you said something bizarre happened? Yeah, but... She shot a nervous glance at Rolo. Anything you can say around me, you can say around the large one. It's been a weird day all around, hasn't it? Beck's eyes narrowed. Okay, so it all started when I made it back home. The first part of business was to try to salvage my hair. So I dyed it with some stuff from the chemistry set my mom gave me. Okay, just need to play cool and hope no one notices. Notices what? Oh, nothing, I was just... Uh, come over here and let me have a look. Oh, honey, what in the world did you do to your hair? I just kind of felt like a change. This is gonna take forever to grow out. You were the one who said the change was a good thing, right? I was talking about your mother's new job. I was talking about us moving. Well, I guess I just took your lesson to heart. I tried to put on a smile. Before I forget, I came up here to tell you that Nellie had to go into work. Tonight? Her and Mr. Kerr decided it would be good for her to get some things done before tomorrow. That Kerr guy seems like a grade-A creep. Beck! He is! I mean, his weird cult of personality! You are not going to ruin this job for Nellie. It means too much to her. Oh, I know exactly how much it means to her. It means enough to her to exile her daughter to this podunk town. This place sucks. The people are weird. You just don't know them yet. It's always cold, but in the mountains, you'll get used to it. I can't even pick up a single decent station on the radio. It's all banjo music and farm reports. <laughs> they, they must be in Western Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I grew up in a town not that different from this one. Is that why you're Same? better? Is that why you're better at talking to plants and people? Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. First of all, you're grounded. In the morning, I'll have Nelly come and see what we can do about fixing your hair. You need to look presentable for the festival. But not another piece. sighed, and after a moment, looked down at Beck sympathetically. 
I know moving's hard, honey. But that doesn't mean you have to make yourself miserable all the time. Other people seem to have that covered for me. Want to decide, Rebel, by dyeing your hair she more? She flashed a sly grin and tussled Beck's hair. I'll just shave it off for you. Think of that rebellious look then. Very funny. Thank you. Good night, sweetie. Night, Mom. Wait, wait, wait. First of all, the sound does not suck. Second, you need help because you got grounded? No. I'm sorry you got in trouble. It's my fault your hair got screwed up in the first place. Don't worry about it. I actually kind of like this look. Great, now we can get back to the store now? The next part is the important bit. I have this radio I upgraded with my mom, and I was too angry to sleep. So I tried to dial in something worth listening to. I don't even know who's talking. Oh, is that? Apologies, I have the pounder on the other line. <laughs> One moment. <laughs> Skip the pleasantries. What's your report on our new lead research of deep engineering? <laughs> Excellent. And you have faith that she's capable of finishing the work left by her predecessor. Her work must be complete before the festival. Oh my god, she's gonna be the next Walt. <laughs> Good, you know how I feel about loose ends. <laughs> Once she has finished the work, we need to make a determination regarding her. Long-term prospects in the company. <laughs> We're in the end game, Bill. After your failures with Dr. Prescott, I can't afford to take any risks. Oh, okay, she's gonna be the dead body, dude. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> oh? <laughs> I see. <laughs> Sue, I'll make this very clear for you. I brought you in to make things run smoothly, not to have opinions. <laughs> Chin up, Bill. You are only a few days away from having everything you ever dreamed of. <laughs> <coughs> well. Yeah. Just so we're clear, when they said loose ends, they were talking about murder, right? Like actually killing someone? Capital murder? Luca gave Rollo a quick elbow to the ribs. Who is this founder? I was hoping you guys would know. Nah, as far as I know, Kerr is the top banana at perennial harvest. He sounded scared of this founder guy. So you have an even topper banana on the field. What the hell's my mom caught up in? Has she talked about the job much? Not really. She said she was going to come in and continue the work of someone she respected. Luca, do you think that body at the warehouse was... The person Mo Beck's mom came to replace? That would make sense. Beck, it seems like Nellie's presses are got, um, loose-ended. I'm getting that impression. Okay, so we need to get your mom out of there before the festival happens. That's two days away. Won't she just come home after work? The creep on the radio said they were going to hold her there until then. So if she's not coming out, we gotta go in and get her. Picked a large sheet of paper out of her pocket and slammed it on the floor. Maybe this will help. You have blueprints? Well, it's really just a welcome app for my mom's PH orientation day, but it shows the layout. Sure looks like blueprints to me. Look, there's the reception area. There's a big room marked Founder's Office. It even has the exits marked. Guys, 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 why would they do this for a bat, for a welcome mat? We have a deadline. We have an objective. We have blueprints. You realize what this is, right? To wiggle with excitement. Don't break the treehouse, you jackass. I've seen that, that one, uh... Robin Williams movie. I think we're hosting. 
This is officially a heist. Chapter six, the heist. <laughs> they spent the night's end huddled around that small map, formulating a plan to infiltrate the headquarters of Perennial Harvest. It would be no small feat. A modern facility equipped with all manner of technology, not to mention the swarm of clipboards that would most certainly be scattered throughout. By the time the sun began to peek through the car window used as a makeshift balcony door, all were in agreement. This could just work. The final day before the festival would be used to prepare. They'd need to pull every resource at their disposal, pull every favor with a thread. Even enlist some unsavory characters around town with important tasks only they were suited for. Are we doing an Ocean's Eleven now? Luckily, there was yes! <laughs> trust toward perennial harvest that alliances could I always- I need to figure out how to run a heist D&D session. Luca, Beck, and Rollo rubbed their eyes as they exited the treehouse. They hadn't slept at all that night. There was no time. The festival was to begin in one day. And they each had their assignments. Alright, quick recap. Rolo, you're gonna talk to Roxy. Cordially. Without her and Fitz, this whole thing could go butts. Me? Cordial is my middle name. Uh-huh. And how do you plan to explain your new... Rolo's sizable figure. Circumstance. Bah, she'll be so happy I'm alive she won't even notice. I'll just say I went through a growth Beck spurt. <laughs> Beck, you're sure Ulana won't just shoot this whole thing down when she hears it? She'll listen. When she understands the danger Nellie's in, the danger we're all in, the plan will make sense. Okay. That leaves me with Jeff, then Iggy. How are you gonna persuade them? I'll think of something. They looked at each other with sleepy confidence and nodded. Well, Godspeed. Alright. Yeah, we're getting the band back together. Hell yeah, best character in the goddamn game. Oh yeah. Alright, he's probably by the junk pile stuffs. Like, I'm assuming that's where he is. Well, let's see what, uh, what B's reading. I nodded, he shook his head. Over? No. Endings are merely a state of mind. This doesn't end until I give up. Wow, I admire the conviction. But can he really pull through? Alright, there's Jeff. Hey, Jeff. What can I do for you? Well, I know how much you hate perennial harvest. Hate's a strong word. Oh, sorry, I mean, I didn't say it was the wrong word. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> so we're gonna break into their headquarters, and I thought you might be able to help. Weezed out a long snicker. <laughs> you see, I knew you kids were all right. Great, so you'll help? Jeff's face drained instantly. Not a chance, but give me one good reason I should risk my hide aiding and abetting you rascals. The sullen eyes of his would-be accomplice, Luca blurted out the first word that came to mind. Uh, junk. My assumption is junk. <laughs> let's let's try junk. Junk! Yeah, what of it? Sonny, I've got more junk than a king has copper. Ain't interested. Okay. Luca wasn't ready to give. He shouted out. Okay, so junk didn't work. What about. Shit! <laughs> shit! Yeah, it's all shit. Still ain't helping. Ain't that some shit? Hehe! <laughs> okay. Uh... Crooked! Ah, they're all crooks. Like cockroaches. Stamp one out and another comes scurrying along to take its place. I have a feeling fight's gonna be the thing that gets them, so... Hi, 
life! His brow perked up. What did you say? Go ahead and hide then. Oh, never mind. Sensing some traction, Luca carried on with vigor. Let a bunch of kids do what needs to be done. We're not afraid. Faded with a sigh. Say what you will about old Jeff, and they all do. But you'll never hear him say I hit from nothing. One good stomp of the foot was all Jeff needed to drive his point home. What was it you kids needed? Some sort of disguise. I've got just the thing. And while we're at it, that crate should come in handy. This ain't gonna be free, you know. I'm thinking five bags of sour gob should cover it. Put it on my tab. Out his open hand to seal the deal with a firm and dusty grip. Jeff reciprocated. Done. Swing by first thing in the morning. Okay, that works. I should build an artificer like Jeff. Ooh. Up oh, there's Ziggy. Hey, Tish, look who it is! Look, are you here to try to take a lot of death again? Look, just hear me out. An eyebrow suspiciously. We're listening. Iggy, I know we've both been giant bags of... Shit. <laughs> Shit. Shit to each other. Gave a reluctant shrug. They're not wrong. But lately, life has been kinda... Hmm... Strange? Ah. Strange, you know? He considered the point. Things have been weird around here. So I'm offering a truce and asking for your help. What do you say we... I feel like break. Let's see here. Pull our hostilities, at least for now. Pull? We don't pull away from nothing. Buzz off. Okay, I okay. Know. Let's try this. Try it again. Okay, bags of shit. He gave a reluctant... Strange. Consider the... Break our hostilities, at least for now. We do like breaking things. Even if a truce means less breaking things. What if I told you there was a way to have a truce and break stuff? I'm <laughs> glad I understand the character of Iggy. <laughs> Go on. I need you to cause a distraction so I can sneak into perennial harvest HQ. Spread across Iggy's face. My, my, Luca Van Horn, I'm impressed. And after all this is done, maybe you and Tish can come hang out at the treehouse sometime. Over to Tish, who nodded in agreement. Fine. But not because we want to see your crappy treehouse. We just like to cause chaos. Luca was off. Hell yeah! Did you hear that, Tish? He invited us to hang out at the treehouse. I never expected this day to come. How wonderful. Holy shit, she could say something besides yep. <laughs> My god. <laughs> what has this world come to? 